You are looking at Bush Stadium in St. Louis, where in just a short time, the Cardinals will host the Washington Redskins, who will have Billy Kilmer back at quarterback in a game that may decide if either team gets the NFC wild card. Dallas and Los Angeles have already clinched playoff spots in the NFC, but look at all of those possibilities for the wild card. Hello, everyone. Ross Browner and Ken McAfee are the two All-American linemen who many think are the reasons Notre Dame is playing number one Texas in the Cotton Bowl. Well, I spoke to them about the big game and about their thoughts of a pro career. Er? Phyllis, I went out and spoke to the St. Louis Cardinals who've had their problems the last two weeks after being one of the hottest teams in pro football for half the season. I spoke with Coach Don Coriel about today's game and what it'll take to make the playoffs. Irv and Phyllis, 10 teams are still in the running for those remaining five playoff spots. We take a look at four college quarterbacks who could go number one in the upcoming college draft. Jimmy the Greek and Jack Whitaker, too. All that and more coming up on the NFL Today. Set. Brown, 45. Brown, 45. Hot, 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 hot. The NFL Today is sponsored by Two Borg Gold, the golden beer of Danish Kings, Two Borg Breweries Limited, Baltimore, Maryland. From the CBS Sports Control in New York, here's Brent Musburger. Good afternoon, everyone. The Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cincinnati Bengals in the third quarter in Cincinnati, and the Steelers continue to lead that game 10-7. Phyllis, what is the weather like in St. Louis, as bad as it is in Cincinnati? I think so. Very cold and very nasty, but we'll check in with Pat and Tommy in a few minutes. All right, and of course, the big story developing, Irv Cross, you told me that Billy Kilmer will be the starting quarterback and not Joe Theismann. Why would George Allen make that decision? Well, you know, Brent, George is a very superstitious coach. A very good coach, but superstitious. And the last time the St. Louis Cardinals and Washington Redskins played, Billy Kilmer was a the quarterback. They won that ball game 24-14, and he threw three touchdown passes. They have not scored very many points with Theismann. Kilmer is his man under pressure in a championship playoff type game. As far as George Allen is concerned, this is a championship game, and he wants his general in there, and that's Billy Kilmer. Boy, it sure is a championship game. St. Louis and Washington, they both have to win it to get a shot at the playoffs. We've got a lot of teams right now that are driving toward a possible shot in the playoffs. The Dallas Cowboys, well, last week they were led by Tony Dorsett's magnificent 84-yard touchdown run. He picked up 205 yards rushing. Those are both Dallas team records. And the Cowboys clinched the NFC Eastern Division title as they beat the Philadelphia Eagles 24 to 14. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, that Ram Raider game you're looking at determined two more division titles. Pat Hayden hitting Harold Jackson late in the game to beat Oakland 2014. Now, the L.A. victory gave the Rams the NFC West title, while the Raider loss assured the Denver Broncos of the first division title in their history. Because when Denver beat Houston 24-14, that was the other half of the formula that locked up the AFC West. And what does it mean for Oakland? That means their only shot to get back in the playoffs is to win the wild card in the AFC. Now, the Baltimore Colts could have taken a giant step toward that AFC Eastern crown by beating the Dolphins last Monday, but you know what happened. Miami's 17-6 victory over the Colts enabled the Dolphins to tie Baltimore for the top spot, and it also kept New England alive. Now, in the NFC Central, either Minnesota or Chicago will be in the wild card chase. The other is going to win the division. You know what you're looking at right there. With time running out, Sammy White running into the end zone with Tommy Kramer's desperation pass. That beat the San Francisco 49ers by a score of 28 to 27. And tomorrow on CBS, you couldn't ask for a better doubleheader game. It'll be these Minnesota Vikings out in Oakland to play the Raiders. Both teams must win.
But Minnesota needs only same does not exist in the AFC Central. Earlier in the year, Pittsburgh beat Cincinnati by six. The Bengals must therefore beat the Steelers by at least seven today, but you know that with the game in the third quarter, Pittsburgh leads at 10 to seven. And if that score holds up, Pittsburgh will go into the final week of the season in first place in the AFC Central Division. The runner-up, incidentally, cannot make it as a wild-card team. Now, also earlier this year, St. Louis and Washington met in Washington with the Redskins prevailing in that game, as Irv Cross told you, and that's why today's game is such a big one. If St. Louis can reverse the outcome of their first meeting and win today and next week against Tampa Bay, then the Cardinals will be the NFC wildcard team. But if the Redskins behind Kilmer win, then they will stay alive in the battle for the 1977 playoffs. And now, class, is that all perfectly clear? Yeah, applaud you on that. That was wonderful. Applaud the script that I was reading. <laughs> Let us take a look now at some quarterbacks, Phyllis and Irv, who could wind up being selected number one. As you know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, again, will have that top choice. They need someone to solidify the offense. Maybe Doug Williams of Grambling. He's 6'4", 214. He's thrown more touchdown passes than any quarterback in the history of college football. Tonight, incidentally, they have a game left in Tokyo. We'll report on that tomorrow. Now, also outstanding as a quarterback is Guy Benjamin of Stanford. He's 6'4", he weighs 202 pounds. He is the major college passing champion. He completed 63% of his passes for the Cardinals. Another one, Matt Cavanaugh of Pittsburgh, 6'2", 210. You remember his game against Notre Dame, went out with a broken wrist, and I'll tell you what the scouts like, the fact that he came back before the season ended. Also, you're looking now at another good quarterback, Gifford Nielsen of Brigham Young, 6'5", 203. These shots taken at night earlier in the season. Nielsen out with a knee injury, but the scouts say that he has a marvelous opportunity to wind up someday as a starter in the National Football League. And the NFL today will continue on CBS when we travel down to St. Louis to talk to Pat and Tommy in just a moment. Oh, this is perfect. Could you hold it for me? I get paid Friday. I'm sorry. This is a Christmas special. Oh, uh, how about a deposit? Um, uh, do you take postage stamps? <laughs> you take master charge, don't you? Master charge? Of course. You've just seen Clout in action. Clout is your master charge card, your personal account for Christmas shopping in over two million places. Carry Clout and relax. Oh, boy, do I need one of those. Let's buy our small computer from the giant computer company. You can't beat Goliath. No. Goliath. Right, David? Sir, let's go with Wang. Nobody makes a better small computer or a word processor. They're giant killers. It happened before. It can happen again, because nobody's hungrier than Wang. He's right. Tubor Gold, the golden beer of Danish kings. By appointment to the Royal Danish Court. Tubor Gold. Only centuries of the Danish brewer's art could achieve its noble character for lightness and flavor. Tubor Gold, now brewed in America. So, for about what you'd pay for the King of Beers, you can now have Tubor Gold, the golden beer of Danish kings. Tell us all that nasty weather that slammed in the Midwest. I think it's time to find out what it's like in St. Louis today. And let's just do that. Well, we have two fine broadcasters, Pat Summerall and Tom Brookshire, where the Cardinals are playing the Washington Redskins. Not to be a good game. Let's see what these guys have to say about it. Hello. Hello, Phyllis. It is 14 degrees in St. Louis. But, uh, Tom, they have done an absolutely amazing job getting this field in good shape. Yeah, last night this thing looked like a frozen daiquiri, but they've really done a great <laughs> job. They've put some chemicals on it, and it's really a fast track and also a good track. Right. We'd just like to confirm what Irv Cross said. I know you talked, and so did I, with Billy Kilmer, and he's going to start at quarterback. Yeah, they say in practice he's been throwing the ball better than he ever has the last couple of weeks, and he's beaten this team three times in a row. And Jim Hart doesn't play that well, really, against Washington. What about the Cardinals? What do you think they're going to do? It's going to be something different, I know that. Yeah, they better change the defense. They've given up 16 deep passes to Miami, and they had 200 yards rushing by the Giants. They've got to work on defense hard. And we've got to go to work, too, so we'll throw it back to you, fellas. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, they look good in the cold. Tommy Brookshire looks like Sherlock Holmes, doesn't he? <laughs> Finding out all the scoop about Kilmer and all. What was he saying about Billy Kilmer throwing the ball better than ever? Yeah. Or across that must mean that only wobbles a half dozen times instead of <laughs> 10 or 12, huh? Well, you know, but he is a winner, though. You know, I don't know how he does it. He doesn't look pretty throwing the ball, but he gets points on the board. But I went out to St. Louis earlier this week and talked to Coach Don Coriel and quarterback Jim Hart, and they're very, very concerned about this ball game. They would have to be concerned about the performance of the ball club the last couple of games, routed by Miami and then upset last Sunday by the Giants. After winning six straight games, the St. Louis Cardinals are one of the hottest teams in pro football. And one of those wins gave the Dallas Cowboys their first defeat to tighten the National Football Conference Eastern Division title race. Two weeks ago, however, things began to turn for the worse. And it all began right here at Bush Stadium. On Thanksgiving Day, Bob Greasy's six touchdowns enabled the Miami Dolphins to rout the Cardinals 55 to 14 before a nationwide audience. Then last Sunday in the Meadowlands, the Cardinals were ambushed by the New York Giants 27 to 7. Hopes for a wild card playoff spot are all that remain, and it's safe to say there's some concern in St. Louis. It's all on our shoulders. There are two games left, and we have to win them both and one, the immediate one, of course, against Washington. Whenever they play us, they go all out. Now, the only thing I can say, Irv, is that we are, are just working as hard as, as hard as we can. The uh, staff is uh, sleeping on the floor, and the offices, uh, sleeping bags. Uh, we're putting as many hours as we can. <laughs> I think a lot of things are going to happen. I think it'll be a great game. Quarterback Jim Hart must now face a Redskin defense, which has always been tough for the Big Red to handle. It would be all or nothing for Hart and the Cardinals, and each man knows he must produce. They, they have defensed us very well. Uh, who's responsible for that, I, I don't know. Uh, you, uh, you're going to have to give credit to George Allen. He's a fine defensive uh, mind. We don't get sacked very much, but the Redskins will always get a couple sacks on us just because we take too long to throw, that they just cover our people and we can't find someone open. And, and we're a football team that, that dares you uh, to stop us. We're going to say, we, we do this well, and you prove you can stop us. They've proven they can stop us. The Cardinal offense has a reputation for being a big play offense. Is that really the way to describe it? My ire gets raised a little bit when I, when I hear we're a big play team. What team is not a big play team? Show me Dallas how they, uh, how they will win without a big play. They don't. We beat them because they didn't have a big play in our ball game. Washington beats us the same way. Passed down the middle, Gene Fugit, 24 yards. That's a big play. And they call us big play team. Every team's a big play team. You need it to win. Jim, the, the Cardinal-Cowboy rivalry is intense. Is the Cardinal Redskin rivalry even more intense than that? Yes, because I think uh, talking about the Cardinal Cowboy rivalry, there's a, there's a bit, uh, we're on speaking terms with the Cowboys anyway. Uh, we'll chat with them uh, after the game, win or lose. But the uh, Redskins, it's, it's pretty tense. I know there are a few guys on the team that I'm fairly close to, but uh, well, when it comes to playing that game, I'm. I don't have any desire to, to speak with them. Could you almost say you don't like the Redskins? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brent, the stage has been set for a real head-on-head -head battle this afternoon. Oh, no, it should be a fine game, Irv. And the NFL today will continue on CBS in just a moment. <laughs> you want to start something? Start using Rayovac Alkaline Energy Cells, the finest battery Rayovac makes. No ordinary battery can last as long as our Alkaline Energy Cell. In fact, one Rayovac Alkaline can last up to eight times longer than an ordinary battery. So if you want to start something, start using Rayovac Alkaline. Get something started with Rayovac! Introducing Dutch Masterpieces. Dutch Master's gift cigar tins, inspired by 19th century collector's items. Now you can have the fun of giving them, too. This one holds 25 great-tasting presidents. And this one, 25 mild Dutch Master's panatellas. Get them now where gift wrap boxes of 50 Dutch Masters are featured. See why there really are Masters at Dutch Masters? Time was when a man spent a good part of his time laying in firewood for the winter. 
Maybe firewood is an idea whose time has come again. And today, cutting firewood is a lot easier, thanks to Homelite, the chainsaw king. If you invest in this Homelite XL right now, you can save $30. And on other selected models, you get a free carry case. From Homelite, the chainsaw king. Available at participating Ace Hardware stores. They gave away more than the Heisman Trophy the other night. Ken McAfee of Notre Dame was selected the best offensive end in the country. And one of his teammates, Ross Browner of the Fighting Irish, the best defensive lineman. And as they went up to receive their hardware, there you were, Phyllis, giving them their trophies. Boy, what great years they've had. They both had great years. They're fine young men. And, of course, Earl Campbell won the Heisman that night and a very excited man from the University of Texas. But these are two fighting Irish that fight all the way and want to win January 2nd. I know you had an opportunity to talk to McAfee and also Browner about their chances. Two big reasons why Notre Dame may defeat Texas in the Cotton Bowl are named Ross Browner and Ken McAfee. McAfee, number 81, has been the All-American tight end for three straight seasons, and this year was a leading vote-getter for the Heisman Trophy. Last season, Ross Browner, number 89, was the Outland Trophy winner, symbolic of the nation's outstanding linemen. How about predictions for the Cotton Bowl now? You're playing the number one team in the nation. How do you feel about that? Of course, uh, Texas is ranked number one. They're justly deserve the ranking since they are the only undefeated team in the nation. We feel that, uh, do we, should we beat Texas? Uh, we feel that we have a chance for the number one ranking. I think uh, this game is going to be for the national championship. Whatever game we step into is really going to be a tough one. And Texas is just another game we had to step into, even though it is your hometown. <laughs> <laughs> Either one of you pattern yourself after any NFL player? Have aspirations of, are you individuals enough that you want to become your own player? Do you pattern yourself at all? Oh, definitely. I don't pattern myself after everyone, of course. A lot of people have tried to compare him with Dave Casper. He plays, uh, played at Notre Dame, was a tremendous tight end, and probably the most predominant figure in National Football League now as a tight end. And I guess it's just uh, a natural situation that everyone has tried to compare me, but I don't pattern myself after Dave Casper or anybody else for that matter. I just try to play my best game and try to help win football games for the University of Notre Dame. At 6'4", 250 pounds, McAfee is a powerful blocker who possesses incredibly soft hands for a man so large. And when Notre Dame is near the goal line, he is the man they seek out for a sure six points. Many pro scouts believe if Earl Campbell is not the number one pick in the pro draft, McAfee will be. In size, speed, and style, Ross Browner most resembles the Dallas Cowboys all-pro defensive end Harvey Martin. He is a tracker, a hunter of quarterbacks, a man who destroys offenses. Pro scouts drool over Browner's potential, and he is certain to be one of the first five players picked in the draft. Ken, your father played for the Giants, I believe, for six or seven years. Did you learn anything from him? Well, uh, you know, he never pushed me into football. He made me take piano lessons and dancing lessons. You so, uh, take yeah. piano lessons? <laughs> oh, sure. Let me yeah. see those hands. <laughs> With hands like that, it's hard to believe you, you were going to play the piano. And what about you, Ross? Notice you had an earring in your ear. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> That's for bravery. That's like, you know, something for a warrior, you know. I they sent out warriors in a tribe, and they used to have earrings in their ear, you know. So Is that it's really, really a warrior. You're two very fine men. I appreciate your talents on the football field. Thank and good much. luck. Well, thank you, Phil. Thank you very You're much. a very fine young lady. <laughs> I like your you. smile. Right. <laughs> good teeth, huh? Oh, right. Right. Nice dimples, too. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> you know, that day we had to put on our wide-angle lens on the camera. These guys are huge. They're very, very big. Right, Earl? Wait till they get to the pros. They'll just be one of the family. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with just a couple of games remaining for most teams, it is the time of the year when the playoff contenders must dig down now for something extra. And Jack Whitaker has some thoughts about one of these extra ingredients. The Cardinals and the Redskins will be lurking around this afternoon like two out-of-work sailors knowing there's only one job on the outgoing freighter. I think it's remarkable that these two teams are still alive for a wild-card spot in the playoffs. The Cardinals, as you know, have been riddled with injuries, and goodness knows, the Redskins look like they were expiring from old age months ago. 
But George Allen always knows what to feed his team late in the season. And here are the Redskins still dancing at 10 minutes to midnight with a chance to take the lady home. This is the time of year when pain becomes very important in professional football. In these last two weeks, in these afternoons when it gets dark at 4 o'clock and the wind has no softness, it is then that the players pay the price. Injuries and pain, that's what makes football different from most sports. Look at the contending teams coming down to these last two weeks. Minnesota without Fran Tarkington. Dallas sputtering without 100% Roger Staubach. And Oakland a little less than secure with an injured Kenny Stabler. It is the people who are healthy who have the advantage now. It is almost better to be healthy than lucky in the NFC. Almost. One of the nice things about all this is that hurt players many times play beyond themselves and win. Jack, we've also got a hurt coach today. Chuck Knoll of the Pittsburgh Steelers slipped on the ice in Cincinnati last night when he was going out for dinner. He broke his left arm. He's on the sidelines right now in Cincinnati, and the Steelers continue to lead by three. And the NFL today will continue with Jimmy the Greek on CBS in just a moment. Ryder rents trucks, all kinds of trucks. And Ryder does everything possible to make sure the wipers work, the headlights work, the brakes and steering and transmissions have been checked out. So practically nothing can stop a Ryder truck. Because when you rent trucks, you don't want them to give you problems. You want them to solve your problems. Ryder, the best truck money can rent. I'm Jackie Stewart, and I can tell you how to save some money. If you change your own oil filter, you probably buy one of these. How do you decide? By name, price? There's one big difference in these filters. The Ace costs less, and it does a very good job of protecting your engine. You'll pay more for these, but you won't get a better filter than Ace. With a choice like that, which would you buy? Ace. Good filter. Good price. By appointment to the Royal Danish Court since the reign of Frederick IX, Tubor Gold proclaimed the golden beer of Danish kings. Today, this light beer of noble heritage is brewed in America, and Tubor Gold is affordable to everyone. In fact, for about what you'd pay for the king of beers, you can now have Tubor Gold, the golden beer of Danish kings. Jimmy the Greek is sponsored by Muriel Cigars. Where there's Muriel's smoke, there's fire. And Greek, how do you analyze St. Louis and Washington today? Well, we better do some analyzing here. Well, what's going to happen more or less is that the pressure's going to be on the, on the cornerbacks for, for the Redskins. I mean, on Williams and Lavender more than anybody else. They're the ones that's going to have to play close and play them real tight. St. Louis again gets a check for speed, even though the field might not be perfect today, right, Jimmy? I think so, definitely. Uh, the defensive front of Washington has been doing a great job, in including their secondary. Now, here you see Hart. This is the play where I say that the cornerbacks definitely must play up. Lavender, Lavender comes over here as Gray splits the, the zone, and Lavender tackles him. But if you notice that Gerard Williams is playing back too far, and I think he's going to have to play a little bit closer today. Uh, Curtis has been doing a great job, actually, uh, uh, substituting for Hamburger, and he's been playing rough. And he always does play rough. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way he threw that flag back. <laughs> so the big check goes to who, Greg? The Not the big check. It's a very small check, and this is a tight ball game, let's face it. Jimmy, what about the fact that St. Louis has looked bad its last two times out? Do you throw those two games out in considering this one no, today? No, just one, just one. Actually, Hart played well in the game before. It was the last game that they played poorly. The defense has been playing poorly in both games. But you're going to see a different St. Louis team this time. They're going to come on, I think, with three tight ends and try to control the ball more because J.V. Kane is back. They're going to do things a lot different. All right, Jimmy, and I want to come back and talk to you about Buffalo and the fact they're going to have a new coach as the NFL Today continues on CBS in just a moment. Where 
There's Muriel Smoke, there's fire. Jimmy, we've got an update out of uh, Cincinnati that I want to give you. The Bengals have just gone ahead of the Steelers by a score of 17 to 10. They tied it with a field goal. Then I'm told that on the kickoff, recovered a fumble and went right back in. And of course, what is it? Uh, Cincinnati has to win by at least six today, Jimmy? No, seven. They this have is to the win right six. figure. All right. So if they Providing hold right they hold there, it. they're in good shape, they're right? In good shape. Now, what about Buffalo and Monty Clark and all of those stories that we've been reading about? Well, last supposedly of days? Wilson has not talked to Monty Clark. But we have found out that his assistant, Mr. Cox, has talked to him. But there's a lot of talk about Monty going to Detroit and also to Washington. Washington <laughs> yeah. rumor comes back up again. Uh, Greek, uh, where would that put uh, George Allen on the... Well, I just think that maybe Williams is just talking to Monty just in case that George decides to go to the West Coast somewhere. But I think the situation on the West Coast since San Diego has been playing better and the Rams look like a definite contender for the Super Bowl, it's going to make it a little rougher. Okay, Jimmy, I want to go back to last Sunday and show you what I think was the highlight of the day. Tommy Kramer of the Minnesota Vikings beating San Francisco. Tommy, what were you thinking about on the bench that day? about the cold but uh, you know I knew that you know we had to score some points quick and uh, one way to do it is to throw the ball and you know the line blocked and we came up with the big plays when we needed them. Did that cold go away when uh, Bud said hey you're in the game right now? Oh yeah you know once you're playing you warm up a lot and because uh, you're thinking about other things but uh, you know it, you don't feel it while you're out there and that's what's you know that's what's so good about it. Tommy, I know you called just about all the plays uh, while you're in the game. Of course, with the exception of the final touchdown pass to Sammy White, uh, what was involved in that play? Now? Oh, we just had our two wideouts on uh, sideline patterns. We ran Sammy on a post right down through the middle, and Sammy beat the free safety, and the ball was there, and he ran it in for a touchdown. The play was designed, hopefully, to get Sammy one on one on the defensive back. Right. It's well, you know, we were hoping that they would double cover our outside receivers, and they did. And uh, well, there's only one man left for Sammy to beat, and uh, he did it. Tommy was talking to Mark Rosen of WCCO, and the Greek has just told me that tomorrow, when you watch Minnesota play Oakland in the doubleheader game on CBS, you'll see that young man at quarterback, and what a story he was last Sunday. We've got a great game coming up. St. Louis and Washington, both teams have to win, and both teams will play that way, I'm sure. For Jimmy the Greek, Irv Cross, and Phyllis George, I'm Brent Musburger. Have a nice afternoon. We'll see you at halftime. The NFL Today is sponsored by Radio Shack, leaders in home electronics for 56 years. Ford and your Ford dealer who invite you to see their better ideas for 78, including Fairmont, the Ford in your future. The 1700 J.C. Penney stores, coast to coast, and the catalog. And by Ryder Truck Rental, the best truck money can rent. Stay tuned as the NFL Today continues after this word from your local station. Mike and Gloria relive their first date that almost became their last one on All in the Family tomorrow night on CBS. Ice around the edge, as you can see, it's about 14 degrees, and here come the Cardinals. Their record, also seven and five. One of them will not make the playoffs. The loser says goodbye to postseason play today. We're at Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis, right by the arch and right by the banks of the Mississippi. Good afternoon to you. I'm Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire, and Billy Kilmer is going to be the starting quarterback for the Redskins. He's only 38 years old, and we're told that he is ready for this game like no other. And as I saw him before the game, I said, if you want dollar bills with dead presidents on them, meaning a lot of money, you got to win this one. There's nowhere else they can go. And the Cardinals have told us that they'll be making some rather drastic changes. I think our defense will see the Cardinals in a 34 defense. Uh, they didn't get along very well with the 4-3 the last couple of weeks. So, Patrick, I think the Cardinals have won that toss, and we better get on with it. Let's get to it. You are right. The Cardinals will receive and back deep in the middle. Number 21 is Terry Metcalf. The field is in excellent shape. Kicking off for the Redskins, Mark Mosley, who at the request of the Cardinals took off his shoe and let the Redbirds inspect it before the game. 
That is Steve Jones, number 34, to about the 28-yard line. In the sunshine right now, Eddie Moss made the tackle. Offensively, those Cardinals will go with, of course, Mel Gray, Roger Finney, Bob Young, Banks, Dobler, and Deerdorf. Deerdorf now down 38 pounds with that broken jaw wired shut. Mel Gray, Ike Harris, J.B. Kane back with a bad shoulder, even though he may not be 100%. Jimmy Hart, Terry Metcalf, and Jim Otis, a very consistent ball carrier. Otis starting in place of Wayne Morris. Morris has a lower back injury. Otis, of course, a couple of years ago went over the 1,000 yards. Metcalf and Otis then as Hart throws outside first to Ike Harris. He had it in the basket and dropped it. Gerard Williams out there with him. Redskins seven and five. The Cardinals are seven and five. Here is the Redskin defense now. The front four of McDowell, Dave Butts, Dyron Talbert, and Carl Lorch in place of Dennis Johnson. This team's only given up an average of about 13 points a game. That's Dusek, McClint, and of course Curtis, who's playing for Hamburger, and it's playing very well, I might add. And the secondary, Williams, Lavender, Houston, and Scott. The last two, the safety men. Harold McClinton puts up his hands on second and ten. Cardinal shift around a little bit again. Hart drops again. J.V. Kane, who missed the game last week because of a bad shoulder, makes the reception. He stopped by Ken Houston. We were told, and Don Cornell, uh, Coriella affirmed this before the ball game, that they just can't play the normal type offensively or defensively plans that they've been using. So we're going to see probably men in motion. We're going to see sneak backs by the tight end that you just saw and a lot of different wrinkles. They've got to get on the board early, and this is one of the great defenses to try to score points on when you're in a playoff situation. A six-yard game. It'll be third and four. Here's Hart again. Down he goes in the grass. Uh, Bill Brundage. There's some question about whether or not he'd be able to play because of a sprained ankle. That was but the 40th sack for the Redskins this year, and they've always thought that if they got to Jim Hart early and showed him a lot of different coverages in the secondary, they might give him a tough afternoon, and over the years they have. Eddie Brown, deep for Washington, and Dwayne Carroll, number 12, is the Cardinal punter. It is cold, but the field is in excellent condition. A little bit on the damp side, but they did some job. Here is Eddie Brown. At his own 38. Swinging wide to the right. He gets one block. He got another one. And Brown comes out of bounds. In front of his own bench. With a Redskin offensive unit. Led by Billy Kilmer goes on the field. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals and the National Football League is prohibited. There, there's the offensive line. Stokes, Saul, Haas, Hermeling, and Stark. And the receivers, Danny Bugs, Frank Grant wide, and the tight end is Gene Fugit. And the backfield, and number 17 is the quarterback. Mike Thomas gets the first carry and gets some pretty good yardage before Jeff Severson comes up and they drive him backwards. Let's watch that Cardinal defense now and see if they do come in the 3-4. Gosh, Thomas got knocked right out of his bonnet, his headgear. There's the defense. Jankowski, Dawson, Davis, and Zook, which means they're going to be in the four. At least it's going to start that way. Williams, Kellum, Arneson, they've had a lot of troubles in the linebacking cores. And the secondary, they've lost two starters with injuries, and Roger Worley's still an all-pro at the right corner spot. Second down now for the Redskins. They need about five for a first down. The snap gets away from Kilmer. The Cardinals have it. Mark Arneson. Somehow, Kilmer pulled out too soon. And the Cardinals have it in Redskin territory. We said earlier that the coal should not bother the players, but I'm telling you, the hands have got to be glassy a little bit. There's the ball bouncing around. Arneson, very quick to take advantage of it. And boy, Billy Kilmer, what a way to start on offense. It didn't look like he ever had possession of the exchange from center Lenny Hawes. And so the Redskin defense comes back. Cardinals offense operating now at the Redskin 37, first and 10. There's the shift. Pitch back to Metcalf. 
Metcalf for six or seven. Stopped by Brad Dusek. Met Metcalf has had four fumbles in the last four games. That time the Cardinals ran to the weak side of the formation and got Deerdorf out on that corner linebacker. Boy, I'll tell you, they've got speed and they've got a tremendous offensive line. And they're also coming off two rather severe losses to Miami on Thanksgiving Day and to the Giants last week. And everybody around here is trying to figure out what the problem is. Second and four. Jim Hart, the quarterback. He gives again to Metcalf. And Metcalf is chased back to the line of scrimmage. A loss. Dyron Talbert was the guy who whizzed past first. Harold McClinton and Jake Scott made sure. Notice Chris Hamburger is in there now. This would bring up a situation where the fifth back will come in for the nickel defense for the Redskins, which is Eddie Brown. And also make you wonder where Mel Gray is. Number 85 is the guy that the Redskins, they feel, must they must keep him off the board. They might let him have one touchdown, but he can't get more than that. All right, he splits wide to the right. Mel Gray on third and seven at the top of your picture. Mike Harris to the other side. And there's a third down for Jim Hart. The protection this time is good. But the pass is knocked loose. Jake Scott on the coverage. Intended for J.D. Kane. Hart that time was looking for the tight end. It looks like he's really concentrating on 6'4", J.V. Kane. Jake Scott, though, was really there, and I guess that's why you pay safety men $130,000 a year. Is that what he makes? Uh, he's close. That's on a... Anything close to that is okay. I don't know if I've let the IRS know something they haven't, but that was published once. Saw you talking to Jake before the game about... How his ribs are feeling. What did he say? Guys, he said that they're just about getting well, but you only played pretty well with three fractured ribs the last couple of weeks. Wayne Carroll is number 12, and Eddie Brown stands back at the 10-yard line as the Cardinals cannot capitalize. Line drive punt. Eddie Brown lets go, and it goes into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. Cardinals couldn't quite get down to cover it, so the Redskins will come back. And Lenny Hawes and Billy Kilmer spent some of that time working on the exchange between the center and the quarterback. Score is nothing, nothing in the first quarter. Ah, oh, now we're off and How's it sound? We're okay now. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. I feel like he's a house mother or something, don't oh, you? Red eye? Yeah, I feel like he's, we're in a fraternity and he's our pledge father. Barry Frank called up here and said he wants you to call him. <laughs> and you better not forget it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's okay. Just keep this. Too bad we don't have that slow motion. We can have that, you say? What do they call the big red line? All right. Did they have one? Uh, no, babe. Yeah, they they didn't make a first down. They didn't get close up to the post. <laughs> Redskins taking over. I think. What, what are you going to say? We ought to have some competition between the cheerleaders of the different teams. I like to see you know, them like working out. Or something. They sure work out hard. Easy to see why they stay warm. First Cal and ten. And Calvin Hill is in there along with Harmon. Right. And it's Clarence Harmon, the ball carrier, to the right side. About a seven-yard pickup. Calvin Hill, the other running back. Pretty good block by Calvin on the outside linebacker, too. It got into Williams enough to where... A smaller fullback at 190 pounds. This is sort of a funny thing. The fullback weighs 190, and the blocking halfback weighs about 218 or 222. Steve Neal's one of the Cardinal linebackers on the outside who made that tackle along with Tim Turney. Second and four, six-yard pickup. There's Calvin Hill. And that big, tall fella of whom Tom Brookshire was speaking, goes out of bounds. Ken Reeves made the tackle, number 36, the safety man. Good play by Reeves, too. He played off the blocker. who had gotten out cleanly on him. The Redskins think they can run wide on St. Louis. 
Billy Kilmer had three touchdown passes in that 24-14 win, that third game of the season in Washington. He throws the quick inside things and the quick out about as well as George Allen would like it, I guess. Mike Thomas just checked back in. Calvin Hill over checking with George Allen, first and ten. The Redskins have the football. And again, Kilmer brings it back to Thomas, who does a couple of little dance steps, and he's broken it. Mike Thomas chased down by Roger Worley from the other side, but another Redskin first down. The defense of the Cardinals has had problems in recent weeks, and the boos start to come from the crowd at Bush Stadium. Mike Thomas has never had under 80 yards. Look at the good block by Nugent. This little fella is off. He has had some big days, but never over 80 or never under 80 against St. Louis. He's right at that margin. Line of scrimmage now is the Cardinal 42-yard line where the Redskins have it first and 10. Well, one of these teams, hopes of a playoff spot will end today. For the other one, they'll still be alive. There are many possibilities, however. But the loser of this one will not go to the playoffs. Kilmer gives again to Thomas, and again he tries to come wide, this time only back to the line of scrimmage. No more. Steve Neal is the first hitter. And notice Kenny Reeves, number 36, was up over the line of scrimmage, turning the play in. And this has been one of the problems, that Redbird secondary. Here's that St. Louis bench. That's Deardorff on the left. Dobler is biting his own shoelace as he's tying his <laughs> shoes. That's quite a group, that offensive line for St. Louis. That's a different looking shot here in St. Louis, too, because... The Cardinals swapped sides with the Redskins so they'd be in the sun as long as it was a factor. So the Redskins are on the cold side. If there is such a thing, the Cardinals are on the warm side. And there's Clarence Harmon breaking another tackle. Roger Worley down there with him, and Worley finally gets him out of bounds along with Dawson. There had to be two or three missed tackles on that run, and it's always uh, difficult to explain whether it's good running or bad tackling. But young Allen missed number 27. Let's watch this. Pretty simple play to the left side. Saul out in front. There's one. There's two. And those are arm tackles for everybody except Worley, who finally got him out of bounds. That run by Harmon all the way down to the Cardinal 18 as Mike Thomas comes out. Cincinnati leading Pittsburgh 17 to 10. Now they had to win by more than six in order to keep their playoff hopes alive. Harmon pounds straight ahead. This time only a couple. Eric Williams made the tackle. Now people might think that the throwing hand is the one that gets cold on a quarterback, as you see Billy Kilmer there, but sometimes it's the left hand that puts the ball up and sets it up that gets so numb on the quarterback that he can't handle it. So don't just think it's that right hand. The throwing hand, for some reason, stays warm all the time. Lenny Hawes wiping his hand, number 56. A one-yard gain on first down, make it second and nine at the Cardinal 17. The year for Kilmer in 1977. Harmon breaks a couple more tackles, gets to the 15, and they swarm. Tim Kearney. Kearney's in there now as the linebacker and made a real good play along with Roger Worley, who came all the way under from the other side. Like Jim Harmon Kick. might be shaken, huh? I think so, and Jim Kick has gone into the game. Recently signed by the Redskins. Runs great patterns on third down out of the backfield. And a very clever football player. There's Jimmy Kick. I'm looking at the other end of the field, and Mike Thomas is headed for the Redskin locker room. Don't know what the problem is, but we'll try to find out. Gilmer drops. Gilmer throws. Calvin Hill at the five. Calvin Hill, Redskin touchdown. Jeff Severson and Bob Giblin were carried into the end zone by Calvin Hill. That was Billy Kilmer's sixth touchdown of the year. And Calvin Hill's seventh catch of the year. Look at this. We talked about him being large. You might recall back in 72, 73 with Dallas, he had those 1,000-yard rushing years. And since coming to Washington, he's really been sort of part-time. Mark Mosley. With Joe Theismann to hold, Mosley will try to make it 7 nothing, And he does. 7.48 left to play in the first quarter. Washington breaks on top. Touchdown pass from Billy Kilmer. 
to Calvin Hill. And the Redskins lead the Cardinals seven to nothing. A Sandy, I'll tell you, that was a simple touchdown. Huh? Lewis doesn't hit on defense at all. They don't. They don't bang anyone. Even they really when they don't. tackle or make a good play, it's a struggle. Huh? Let him right in there, didn't he? Redskins scoring drive, 80 yards and eight plays. They kept the ball three minutes, 11 seconds. There's 7:48 left to play in the first quarter. Redskins lead seven nothing as Mark Mosley prepares to kick off. And that's summer all with Tom Brookshire. The Cardinal defense did not hit on that drive. I'll tell you that. They looked like they did last week. High, a short kick, bounces to Metcalf, and Metcalf heads straight up the field, Terry Metcalf to about the 37-yard line. Stopped by number 51, Joe Harris. I imagine it's a little bit colder than it was when the game began. Then it was 14. Watch the touchdown Watch again. Watch the left center of your screen. Calvin Hill swings inside. One linebacker falls down. And Calvin Hill runs over a linebacker and two safeties. It'll be a first down for the Cardinals at their own 37. First and 10. Jim Hart still the quarterback. Otis and Metcalf still the running back. Jim Otis breaks a couple of tackles and spins for about seven yards before Jake Scott wraps him up. Went right off uh, Tom Banks and Bob Young's blocks on the left side. A couple of weeks ago against Philadelphia, Otis had 101 yards rushing. And he's a very sure-footed runner. He is not going to be as fancy as Wayne Morris, of course, Wayne Morris isn't healthy, which has pressed him into service. But I'll tell you, anytime you dig it out against this team, you got to dig it out tough. I'd like to win. welcome those of you at WHIO in Dayton, Ohio, who saw the Wolverines beat the Dayton Flyers 71-61. It's 7-0 here in our game with the Cardinals and the Redskins. Washington leads. Dave Butts made the tackle on Terry Metcalf. I asked Dave Butts before the game, uh, what size coat he wore and he said 54 double extra long now that's a top coat for me he just came out of the game that's a top coat what well, is you that's realize a top coat for both of us I mean together <laughs> a third down situation about three yards to go for the Cardinals now <laughs> Mel Gray split wide to the left Hart's looking in that direction, and now down he goes. Ron McDowell had him. He got rid of it. His arm was going forward, so it's not a sack, but that's as close as you can come. And it's not intentional grounding either, which means that they were watching to make sure there weren't Ill illegal hits on the quarterback. They're making sure of the protection of that quarterback. There's the big fella. 42-inch waist. He had a 42-inch waist. He's got 31-inch thighs. <laughs> I guess it tapers you, off down at the bottom. I'm you, not sure. You, you, you must have talked to him a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of information, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Eddie Brown, deep for Washington, and Dwayne Carroll. <laughs> we'll do the punting for St. Louis. The Redskins have not tried to block one yet. I imagine they will before it's over. Low kick in the direction of Brown bounces away from him, and he'll stay away from it. Rolls dead at the 25, where the Redskins will take it over with the first and 10. So we have five minutes, 51 seconds left to play in the first quarter. The score is Washington 7, St. Louis nothing. <laughs> 